Hello, today I'm going to show you time-lapse pictures of coral growth in my tank over the past four years. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amir Azul TV. Uh, this video is a little bit of a tradition. Every month I take pictures of my colonies and uh, my Acropora and SPS and I stitch together all of these pictures to do like a time-lapse video to show you my coral growth over the past year. Uh, this is a bit of a bittersweet video because the aquascape that you're looking at, uh, at right now actually no longer exists. If you've been following my channel you would have seen that I've torpedoed uh, my old aquascape and I've restarted with uh, one inch fags again. So this is going to be like the last uh, four year growth video that I do in a while. Uh, but I thought it would actually be fun to kind of uh, check back on the old aquascape and, and kind of see how far I took my uh, one inch frags when I first started in the hobby and uh, developed it into these nice kind of uh, uh, very large colonies. And uh, I've organized this video in terms of colonies that are slowest uh, and fastest and I've actually been able to be quantitative about that because I, I, did, I did keep track of how many frags I made out of each colony. So uh, the order that you see the video, uh, the corals being presented here is actually from the kind of most number of frags that I made to the least number of frags. All right, let's get started. Alright, I'm going to start my video with retracting a statement that I made in my first video on growth. So, uh, encrusting Montipora, like the uh, Pink Mystic that you see here, grow really, really fast. And I initially recommended them as a way to add a splash of color to a new tank. But I take that statement back. They grow really, really fast. And in my experience, they encircled several of my favorite Acroporas, like the Aura Blue Voodoo and my Orange Passion. And uh, when uh, these Acroporas were encircled by the encrusting Montipora, often the Acroporas lost and died. So I, I take that back. Uh, if you want to have encrusting Montipora, just make sure you keep them far away from your Acropora, ideally on their own rock, because they are very invasive. All right, uh, second up, uh, my probably second fastest uh, SPS was this Aura Birds of Paradise. I've uh, made essentially about the same frags as I did of my uh, Mr. Pac-Man colony, uh, but uh, that the number of frags that I made out of uh, this colony were actually done in about half the time because I, I gave up on this colony. I essentially removed it after two years. It does grow really, really fast. Uh, it, it's a beautiful colony, uh, but uh, it's it's kind of a victim of its own success. It grows so quickly uh, that eventually uh, the canopy of the coral kind of uh, starves uh, the middle parts of the coral. So you actually start having like growth, uh, sorry, uh, die offs right in the center of the colony as, as you see in the pictures here. So I eventually got rid of the colony because I was just too busy uh, to deal with the upkeep and the fragging. All right, my fastest Acropora was uh, Refraft uh, Mr. Pac-Man. Uh, I bought this as a one inch frag. Uh, I put it on my sand bed. It was getting uh, very low par, like 150 to 200. And uh, it just like grew like a monster. Uh, it's got these uh, lovely kind of uh, purple, uh, purplish uh, flesh with uh, green, neon green tips. Uh, very interesting growth patterns. It's uh, uh, it would be a good candidate for uh, for uh, if you wanted to kind of do a bonsai type uh, uh, sculpturing of your Acropora because it's got these very kind of wispy branches. Uh, but uh, by far, I've made more frags of the the Refraft Mr. Pac-Man than any other Acropora, and uh, it, it had this lovely kind of growth pattern. I had uh, glued it to a bit of uh, rock on the bottom, like a piece of live rock and it just kind of uh, grew in the in this very whimsical patterns and and uh, it kind of dominated my aquascape pretty, pretty much everybody who visited my tank they kind of just looked at the mr. Pac-Man colony they're like wow wow what, what is that it was uh, uh, really kind of impressive all right my second fastest Acropora was the refraft pink Cadillac this was uh, also the first kind of high-end Acropora for serious money that I put down for a frag it's got this uh, kind of pink pink body with uh, sometimes a green sheen, uh, green tips and uh, the blue polyps. It was uh, on the top in the center of my tank, gaining around 300, uh, 400 par. 
and uh, uh, you know for a really expensive uh, coral it, it did grow uh, really quickly and uh, uh, it, if given enough space uh, this thing would really kind of dominate I've caught a lot of frags of uh, this Acropora and uh, actually more impressive is, is that several times, I think uh, maybe four or five times uh, in the life of this coral, I've, I've caught like really, really chunky many colonies out. So I, th I think maybe I've caught like uh, uh, five or six really, really like chunky multiple branch uh, mini colonies effectively. And it's just, it kept cutting, uh, cutting, coming back. Uh, the, the more that I cut it, the more it came back. Uh, very lovely coral, uh, coral uh, and grows really quickly. All right, my uh, third fastest Acrobora colony is uh, my mystery tort. Uh, I got this as a, a mislabeled uh, a Cali frag, uh, but it's clearly like a Mayaji tort. Uh, I don't really know what the proper name for it, so I just call it electrical e electric Mayaji tort. Uh, it was on the top in the left boulder, getting maybe 300 par. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, it had this kind of crazy, crazy coloration. It was just like so beautiful, uh, showstopper. Everybody, everybody who see my videos would always comment on the electric Mayaji tort. Uh, but then over time, as it got a little bit larger, and I'm am still not entirely sure why, it started kind of losing the the diversity of color that it had, and just became more uh, more purple and and kind of brown. Uh, I cut. Lots of frags of this as well, and and I actually hacked the colony uh, to kind of uh, pieces several times uh, uh, just to kind of uh, give the other colonies underneath it more space. So uh, again, it was a case of giving one colony a lot of space, and and it just kind of took over. Uh, luckily, I did manage to kind of save a piece right at the end that I had the original uh, electric coloration, and and that's uh, the piece that I kept for my tank rebuild. Okay, then uh, I think we're number four now. Fourth fastest Acropora is the Blueberry Wine Acro. Uh, again, one inch frag, I, I mounted it on the top right, uh, on the top right shelf, gave it a lot of space, which was perhaps a mistake because uh, <laughs> this thing just dominated the space. Uh, it started out like the first year and a half just encrusting, 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 and then it shot up like branches from everywhere. Uh, and uh, you know it, it, it has it has a really lovely color it's uh, this uh, very it's hard to describe blue because it, it kind of shines differently depending on, on how you're viewing it and the light that you're viewing it it, it kind of looks like uh, an, an ice fire without without the <laughs> without the white if, if you know what I'm talking about uh, but uh, it did really well uh, but if, eventually again I, I had to kind of remove that top shelf because uh, it was just kind of dominating uh, my aquascape and uh, you know af after a while you kind of get bored of uh, of looking at these massive colonies at, at least i did but uh you know beautiful colony uh, blueberry wine acro next up is the bonsai valida a very kind of classic acropora purple body uh, green fluorescent uh, uh, tips and, and polyps uh, this thing is a true survivor. I, it was, I think, literally maybe the first or second frag in my tank. It went through lots of uh, changes and swings, uh, lots of uh, changes in, uh, in placement. Uh, it almost died several times, and eventually I kind of put it in a place uh, top, a uh, little bit towards the back, getting around 300 par, and then it really kind of took off. Uh, I think this colony, if, if it was a little bit higher, uh, than the pink Cadillac, it would have actually been bigger, uh, but it was uh, in the shadow of the pink Cadillac for uh, large portions of the time, but it still did a lot of, it still, it still grew really well, and I managed to uh, cut a large number of frags from it. Uh, very kind of classic Acropora, always in demand, uh, lo lovely colors, uh, and pretty robust, I would say. Next up is the Cali Tort, the California Tort, a lovely, lovely uh, blue colony, uh, and always in demand. Like uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a classic. Every uh, SBS collection has to have uh, uh, a Cali Tort, and and uh, uh, I didn't have any issues uh, kind of moving my uh, Cali Tort frags. Uh, it grew a little bit uh, slow at first. I, I mounted it right in the center of the tank, uh, getting around 300, 400 par. And eventually it just it didn't base out or hardly based out it just kind of grew very very long and thin 
and so I actually didn't wasn't able to frag it until maybe year like three or four once uh, the bases uh, uh, and the branches from the base started kind of coming out. Uh, but it, it grew really fast and it was fairly robust like when, whenever I had uh, fluctuations in, in parameters you know some corals would quickly lose their color uh, but I think uh, the Cali uh, blue tort is pretty solid like I, I don't think I, it ever browned out on me it was uh, consistently blue uh, most of uh, the life of the tank. Next up is a generic Acropora tenuous. It's a, a turquoise tenuous. Uh, it's actually a freebie when uh, I had purchased a, a frack pack from somebody. And uh, again, I, I like the uh, Mr. Pac-Man, I uh, glued it to a bit of uh, live rock and put it on the bottom of my tank, uh, getting 150, 200 par. And you know, I put it there not expecting much, uh, but it certainly like uh, really enjoyed that spot. And uh, it grew really, really quickly actually like, uh, probably one of, uh, for a, a brief period of time, it was actually uh, the fastest Acropora uh, uh, in terms of growth in my tank. Uh, it, it has this uh, very kind of uh, interesting, uh, like almost staghorn type uh, uh, growth pattern where it, it grows like uh, these long branches. I wasn't sure whether that's kind of typical or whether the gro I got that growth pattern because it was uh, kind of in a low par area and it was reaching up for, uh, for more par. Uh, but it certainly did really well and I did manage to cut several frags uh, uh, of this colony. Now we have uh, the classic green slimer, uh, fluorescent uh, green polyps, <laughs> fluorescent green everything really. Uh, I think this coral, uh, it's, it wasn't uh, fast growing for me and uh, if you uh, if you kind of read up uh, about fast acropora, often people mention the green slimer. Uh, so I, th I think I think I know why my green slimer wasn't growing as fast. I did kind of move it uh, many, many, many times. I think maybe a, a total of about four times. It, it was kind of like a sacrificial piece. I would put it somewhere uh, where it gets nice light. And then if I got a nicer coral and more expensive corals, I would essentially cut the slimer off the rock and move it somewhere else. So I did kind of abuse my slimer. Uh, nevertheless, I, I, it still kind of grew. Uh, and uh, it, it, it didn't matter where I kind of put it, it always did well. And I did manage to cut several uh, frags off and I actually still have one in my new uh, tank rebuild. Uh, it's kind of a classic, uh, classic Acropora. You, you, it's just like the Cali Tort, you need a green slimer in your, connect, uh, in your collection. All right, next up is the Shakaholic. This was a wild colony and uh, th this is kind of, uh, uh, with wild colonies, you don't really know what you're getting. It looked really beautiful at first. Uh, fluorescent kind of uh, really bright green uh, uh, with uh, interesting uh, growth patterns and and uh, and polyps uh, but this was a colony where like if you looked at it funny it would start browning and uh, it, you'll see from the pictures how often the colony went from looking amazing to browning to looking amazing again to browning to looking amazing again to browning uh, as a result, I kind of didn't grow as well as I had hoped and, uh, and I, I, I wasn't, I think maybe I, I managed to cut like four or five frags out of this colony. And the cycling between green and brown kind of continued until uh, earlier this year, it actually just kind of uh, RTN or, or SDN on me. And uh, I unfortunately had to kind of uh, take bone cutters and totally remove it off the rock. So. Uh, sometimes, you know, when, when you're getting a wild colony, uh, you go through these like phases uh, and uh, uh, I, I kind of prefer to purchase uh, named colonies now, you, you know what you're getting. All right, uh, next up is, uh, oh man, the colony that uh, uh, kind of tore my heart when I lost it, but uh, Refraft uh, Orange Passion. I got it as one inch frag, it was uh, somewhere in the central boulder, a little bit off center, uh, getting maybe 300 uh, par. Um, just amazing colorations uh, these uh, deep uh, blue uh, tips uh, green uh, uh, flesh and orange polyps uh, was by far like not even close uh, my favorite colony uh, if you look if you look at pictures of Walt Disney <laughs> you know that are not photoshopped uh, <laughs> I think the orange passion looks very very similar if not better to a Walt Disney uh, I mean, just look at these pictures and, and th these are the colors that you see. These are not photoshopped colors. 
uh, versus you look at Walt Disney pictures, you, you see the Photoshop picture, and then you look at the Walt Disney and people stank and, and it never looks like uh, the original pictures. Anyway, uh, amazing, amazing, uh, uh, amazing Acropora, uh, lovely colors, and uh, I, I did manage to get like a few frags of it, uh, partly because uh, I didn't really wanna like frag it, but then in December, it, the whole colony just art the end, so uh, really sad about that. Uh, next up is uh, Red Planet. Uh, this was a, a colony that I had amazing hopes for. Uh, I put it on the uh, left, uh, or, yeah, I think left boulder, gave it lots of space, and uh, it, it did nothing but kind of encrust. It just kind of encrusted, encrusted, encrusted. It took a lot of space, you'll, you'll see later in the pictures, uh, that uh, it just kind of took over this uh, uh, boulder. Uh, uh, you, you, you could see that it's kind of it did fight a battle with uh, with the Montipora encrusting Montipora, uh, but it did take it did you know it did hold its own. It had very interesting colors. Uh, mine wasn't getting a lot of par, so it, I got more of the green and less of the red. Uh, but uh, I had high hopes that it will eventually kind of start sprouting out and and table. Uh, but this uh, was one of the colonies that was uh, a casualty of my uh, one month vacation last summer. That's what it looked like when I came back. So I had some issues and, and the colony just died. All right, uh, another colony that, uh, 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 keep <laughs> sticking with the theme of uh, colonies just dying, uh, Red Planet, Refraff Red Planet. It actually grew really, really fast. It has a fil uh, similar growth patterns to uh, uh, my refrat uh, Mr. Pac-Man in, in that it's kind of thin branches, uh, very uh, wispy. Uh, uh, it, I had it up getting a lot of par, I think maybe 300, 400 par in, in the middle. It grew really well. I did manage to make uh, several frags, uh, but again, uh, it was one of those qualities where overnight it's just RTN'd on me. Next up is uh, a Fox Flame, uh, Jason Fox Fox Flame. Uh, very pretty coral. Uh, uh, it browned out on me. I, when I first got it, I put it high up in the tank, getting about 300, 400 par, and it quickly lost its color. Then I put it back on the bottom of the tank, getting maybe 150 par, and then it started coloring up and, and growing. And it, I would say it actually uh, grows really well. And uh, although it's a fairly uh, new colony, it, it has, uh, I've already made like four or five frags from it. So it, it, I would consider it on the fast growing things, uh, fast growing end of things. All right, that was uh, the growth of uh, my favorite Acroporas and, and SPS from uh, version one of uh, my tank. And if you're worried that there's gonna be no more uh, growth uh, videos, uh, don't don't despair. I'm gonna to continue to take pictures uh, every month of my Acropora, and I'll show you the progress uh, every year in terms of uh, how well they're doing. Uh, what I'm excited about is actually there are several frags here that I have in the new rebuild that I've also kept in the version one. So I, I still have a blueberry wine, I have uh, orange passion, green slimer, Cali tort, Mr. Pac-Man. Uh, Pink Cadillac, uh, Electric Myaji Tort. So there, there's a few corals that have been kind of retained as one inch frags or a little bit bigger. And I'm really curious to see whether um, I'm gonna get a faster growth in my rebuild versus uh, in my original kind of first year of reefing. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing things differently now, different equipment, uh, different philosophy, different mindset. And, uh, you know, I expect to have, uh, with, with the four-year experience, I, I expect that I'll be able to grow corals faster. Uh, but, you know, it's an experiment and we will have the pictures uh, from the first year of the rebuild and we'll compare it to the first year of uh, the initial build of my tank and we'll see whether <laughs> AMRO, uh, AMRO four years ago was uh, better at uh, growing Acropora than AMRO now. We'll, we'll see. So if you like this video, uh, thank you so much. Uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button and, uh, and the like comment, and I will see you again uh, next video. Have a good one.